In this video we're going to be looking at leaves. We're going to look at how plants obtain sunlight as well as how they obtain gases and the internal structure of the leaf. So as we know plants undergo the reaction photosynthesis and for this reaction they need light. The structure on the plant that absorbs light are called the leaves. Leaves are generally thin and flat and are arranged in a way that the flat side of them faces towards the sun. So therefore as much surface area as possible can be facing towards the sun, therefore getting the most amount of sunlight on their leaves. And to aid this, some plants are actually able to move their leaves to track the sun and this is called phototaxis. We also know that Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, so therefore plants need a way of getting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and photosynthesis produces oxygen as a waste product, so they need to be able to get that oxygen out of the leaves. One of the ways that they do this is by having small holes on the underside of the leaf called stomata, and stomata consist of a hole or a stoma surrounded by guard cells, in the epidermal layer. And what those guard cells do, they can open or close depending on whether gas needs to get out or come in or whether they are trying to conserve water because with the gas that comes out, they also lose water. Another way that plants can do this is by lenticels. And lenticels are sections of the bark which are permeable to gases. So gases are able to dissolve through these sections of the bark and then be distributed around the plant. We're now going to look at the internal structure of the leaf. We'll just have to look at a few of the different parts. So we have the cuticle, which is a clear waxy layer on the outside that protects the leaf, generally found on the upper side of the leaf. The epidermis is a single layer of cells that again protects the leaf. Uh, it's also clear and it's found both on the top and the bottom of the leaf. So we have the upper epidermis and lower epidermis. As I said before, we've got stomata, which are pores that allow gaseous exchange, so carbon dioxide to come in and out. We've got palisade mesophyll cells. Mesophyll just means uh, cells inside. So the palisade ones are the ones that contain the chlorophyll, and they're found at the top of the leaf, underneath the upper epidermis. The spongy mesophyll are found on the bottom side of the leaf, and they're irregularly arranged so that they've got a whole heap of air spaces between the cells, making them a bit spongy. And this is to allow the gas movement from the stomata up to the palisade cells where the photosynthesis takes place. And we have veins consisting of xylem of phloem that run through the leaf in order to move water into the leaf and take the product of photosynthesis, sugar, or glucose back down to the rest of the plant. And so diagrammatically, we can see that we've got our cuticle up the top. We then have the upper epidermal cells, the palisade layer, which contains the chlorophyll, the spongy mesophyll with holes or air spaces through those irregularly uh, arranged cells. We've got a vascular bundle, which would consist of the xylem and phloem, the lower epidermis, and in between the lower epidermis, we've got the stomata, which are surrounded by guard cells. In this video, we've looked at how plants obtain sunlight, and they do that through their leaves, which have a large surface area facing towards the sun to collect the light. We've looked at how they obtain gases, through either holes in their leaves called stomata or holes in or porous areas of the bark called lenticels. And we've looked at the internal structure of the leaf with the spongy mesophyll in the bottom part of the leaf with air chambers between it to allow those gases to permeate up to the palisade cells where most of the chloroplasts are found and therefore most of the photosynthesis happens and with the epidermal cells around the outside and a cuticle, a waxy cuticle layer on the top.